Hey guys, Hackersploit here, back again with another video. Welcome back to the Over the Wire Natus series. Um, in this video, we're going to be continuing where we left off from. So with uh, Natus level 5. And um, let's actually load that level up here uh, so that we can actually get started. Right, so uh, you can see that we are welcomed by a page here, sort of like a generic page that tells us uh, access is disallowed and you're not logged in. So if we view the source code uh, of the page, you can see it tells us pretty much the same thing here uh, that we, we we don't have access when we're not logged in and it gives us the same uh, variable, uh, JavaScript variable that we had and we always have and that's supposed to give you the password if you need it. Um, so the first thing we want to do or we should do is we need to actually analyze uh, the requests so that we can actually determine if there is any data that's that's important that we're missing or, or that that's supposed to be sent um so i'll just hit start here and uh, what we'll do is we'll just refresh the page here so i'll just refresh this right now and it's going to ask us for the latest five uh, credentials so i'll just do that one more time through the proxy and uh, let's check out the results in the proxy so you can take a look at the request here you have the authorization um, that looks pretty standard um, if we take a look at this base 64 code here uh, that should pretty much have the password so we go to tools uh, and code and we just paste it in here and we say decode yep that gives us the username and the password so nothing special there uh, what we want to do is uh, if we actually take a look at the source one more time uh, we can see that uh, the the script that is uh, you can see that we have a script here that's being injected so uh, let's try and see if we can access any 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 other pages here so we say for example robots.txt sorry uh, let me just uh, add the robots here so we don't have robots.txt um, we have anything else uh, so it still tells us you're not logged in uh, etc so if we just refresh this one more time um, we can see that uh, logged in is set to zero uh, so let's try and change that and let's set it to one so I'll just open up a request here and I'll say logged in is going to be equal to one so we can change the logged in status and we just hit send and it tells us the password for native six is and it gives us the password right so uh you can pretty much see that we get uh, we, we're dealing with a an authorization uh, form of authorization here uh, more to do with the cookie and in this case it's a logged in status which you can see is set to zero in this case which is which means uh, false and then one means true um, and I'll be explaining a lot of these fields as we move along. So we've got the password now. So let's actually, uh, let's copy that. And in the meantime, I'll actually turn off the zap proxy here. So I'll just turn that off. Let's get rid of that. And uh, we'll move on to level six. And this is going to be HTTP, not HTTPS. So we'll say make us six. And let's check that out as well. All right, so we'll hit don't save. And uh, we, it looks like we get an actual uh, a text box or an area in which we can provide input. If we hit submit query, you can see it tells us wrong secret. So let's view the source code, which they happily provide to us. Um, this looks like it's a quite different source code than the actual script here. So yeah, this is pretty much displaying the PHP script and what it does. All right, so let's see what it's telling us here. So it tells us uh, include, and it gives us a directory includes uh, secret.inc, and then it checks uh, if the array key exists, submit the post request, if the secret, if the variable secret is equals to the post plus the secret, uh, and so sorry, the, the array of the, uh, the array secret, and then print access granted, the password is censored, else print wrong secret. So first of all, let, let's check out what this directory contains before we do anything else here. So I'll just paste that in and uh, let me just add that forward slash there. Uh, so that doesn't display anything. Let's check out the source and we get the secret here, the secret variable. So let's copy that and let's see whether we can actually view the source and let's see what, what exactly is going on here. So if the secret is equal to the post request in the array of secrets. So yeah, so, so let's try and put in the, the actual key here and let's submit the query and that works out just fine. All right, so that gives us the password for native seven. That was fairly straightforward. So let's actually change this to native seven now. Uh, 
and uh, let's log in and uh, now we have uh, two two links or a navigation bar of sorts so if we go home uh, to home this tells us this is the front page and we also have an about page so let's click on that so nothing special let's go to the home page let's see what we have here uh, so you can see it tells us uh, there's a hint here on the home page that tells us the password for the web user Natus 8 is in Etsy Natus web pass Natus 8 so um, let's let's see what the other page actually contains the about page so that we understand what's going on so it gives us the same hint it tells us the password for the web user Natus 8 uh, is in Etsy Natus 8 web pass now the interesting thing is it's pointing to uh, towards a local a local file or a local directory in this case it's on the servers which is uh, it gives it's giving us the directory to the password for the next level so let's take a look at the url and immediately you can see we have a php uh, we have a php script and that allows us we have the page uh, selector and as you can see it's saying page is equal to about what if we say something like uh, id let's try and run a command and let's see if we'll execute that um, so you can see it doesn't display anything here so let's uh, it you see it tells us fail opening id for inclusion so we can try local file inclusion here so we say uh, uh, local file inclusion uh, and uh, we can actually open that up here and let's see whether we have uh, any uh, yeah so you can see it right over here so the typical proof of concept would be to load the password file uh, on the server so in, in our case it gives us the directory of the password for the next level. So let's actually try this out. So you can see that um, uh, you can go ahead and read what this vulnerability is all about. So local file inclusion, also known as LFI, is the process of including files that are already locally present on the server. As I mentioned, through the exploiting of vulnerable inclusion uh, procedures implemented by the application or in the application, the vulnerability occurs, for example, when a page receives as, uh, as input the path to the file that has to be included and this input is not properly sanitized so the input is not sanitized here so what we have to do is uh, if we say for example let's see if there is any level of sanitization so we'll say etsy um it is natus uh, um, web pass and we'll say natus 8 let's hit enter and we get the password so we really do not have to provide any specifiers here so if i go back here um, you can see that um, this looks uh, like the perfect, uh, the perfect place to try LFI if an attacker is lucky enough and instead of selecting the appropriate page, uh, the script directly includes the input parameter. It is possible to include arbitrary files on the same server. So again, you can also check out the various cheat sheets if there, if there, is, some f uh, if there is some sort of a sanitization of the input. Hopefully they actually demonstrate this in the next levels. Hopefully they continue with local file inclusion, but that's besides the point. So let's get rid of all of that and let's move on to level eight here, Natus level eight. And um, Natus eight, and we'll hit okay here. Uh, for some reason, it tells us that's incorrect. Uh, I believe I specified the space here. Uh, so let me just copy that one more time and we'll say Natus 8. And uh, if I just move to the end here, uh, let's copy that and uh, say Natus 8. And we put that in there. And uh, for some reason, it tells us the same thing. Uh, what? I believe that's correct uh, for some weird reason that's telling us that's incorrect um, let's try and get that one more time so it still displays the same thing um, so let me just copy this one more time and uh, we'll try that again uh, for some reason this is uh, this is not working um, so let's see what the issue is here uh, and we paste in the password and that takes us to the next level all right I guess I did not copy that initially um, so it looks like we have another input field. Um, if we view the source here, we can see that it pretty much points. It gives us a form and when we're able to submit um, and the script, we can actually view the source code of the script here. So you can see that we have uh, an encoded secret, a variable for encoded secret. It actually gives us the value here. And then we have a function uh, called encode secret. It takes the secret uh, or the variable secret and then it there is a function here it's using various functions so the first thing is it, it does it converts 
binary to hexadecimal after which it is uh, base64 encoded and the string is reversed and then that is stored as the secret all right and then we have an if statement here so the if, if the array key exists submit and the post request if the encoded secret uh, and the post request is equal to the encoded secret print access granted so uh, what we need to do is uh, we need to get the value of this secret and uh, we have the encoded secret here so they give us that value so that we can sort of reverse engineer and decode um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to open up Cyberchef here. Uh, let's open up Cyberchef. There we are. And uh, what we're going to start off with is by understanding what's going on here. Uh, so the first thing we need to do is convert it uh, from hex. So let's search for that. So from hex. Um, and let's bring that in there. And we have an input. The next thing that's happening is the string is being reversed so we need to do that as well so we want to get rid of this let's copy this uh, first of all and uh, we'll paste that in there and now we say um, i believe there is a reverse function yes there it is and that essentially reverses the string for us so we copy this and let's get rid of that um, let's paste that in there and uh, let's take a look at the next step so the next step is to decode this as base64 and that does look like ba a base64 um, hash here and we get this little string of text. So let's actually try that out. Um, let's go back and I'm just going to submit that. And we hit submit and it tells us access is granted. The password for Natus 9 is and it gives us the password. All right, excellent. So yeah, that was a, that was a fairly good challenge in regards to reverse engineering a, uh, a actual function. So you, uh, you essentially need to understand what's happening here. Uh, it's uh, fairly simple to understand, but in any case, if you guys need a further explanation on that, do let me know in the comment section. So Natus 9, um, and then we hit OK, and there we are. All right, so Natus 9 looks a bit different. It tells us find words containing. There's a search box uh, with a search button, and there's an input here, uh, sorry, an output. We can also view the source code. If we view the source code, we can see the same variable key. And that uh, looks like it doesn't have any value right now. And you can see it tells us if the array key exists, needle uh, and the request. All right, so it's processing needle and the request. Let's take a look at the URL for a second. If I just hit uh, test and I hit search, you can see it says needle and the request is processed. All right, but how is the request processed? So let's try and see what's going on here. So, um, if the array key exists needle and the request and the key is equal to the request and needle um, uh, then it tells us uh, if the key is not equal to the the value of the key and then it passes through uh, and it uses grep and it passes through the key or whatever you pass in and it, it has a dictionary.txt file here so um, let's see if that actually exists. So dic uh, dictionary uh, .txt, and let's see whether that exists. And you can see it does. So we have uh, quite a large dictionary here, and this is what it uses to pass through whatever input you pass. That's not the value of the key. So if we say uh, if we say Alexis, for example, that doesn't give us anything. Um, probably because enter is not a valid, uh, so it doesn't give us anything there. Um, let's say doctor. We search, yeah, so it gives us uh, matching results in the dictionary. All right, so that's interesting. The most important thing here is that the needle is included in the request and everything after. So we can probably see, uh, let's see if we can actually perform some LFI here. So if I say Etsy and we say Natus, uh, uh, and I say Natus 10, uh, that doesn't give us anything. So it looks like there is some sort of uh, sanitization or filtering here. Uh, let's break that. And do we have anything? We can actually try some command injection. So again, I'll just search for command injection OWASP and let's see what uh, we can actually do here. Well, let's actually look for a cheat sheet as well. Um, so let's check it out here. So you can see that uh, I have actually covered command injection in my OWASP. Uh, BWAP videos. So you can see command injection is intact where the goal uh, is the execution of arbitrary commands on the host operating system via a wonderful application. 
command injection attacks are possible when application passes are safe and uh, are, are unsafe uh, user supplied data so from unsafe user supplied data so from forms cookies HTTP headers to a system shell that's interesting so um, if I try and uh, say for example like ID that doesn't uh, that pretty much gives us uh, the result here so if we break it uh, similar to what we would do we say ID doesn't give us anything there um, so let's say we say ls for example a simple command and there we are so you can see that works it gives us uh, dictionary.txt um, so what if I say uh, cat etc natus uh, we'll pass natus 10 hit enter and uh, you can see that that gives us the password so yeah that that was fairly simple all you need to do is terminate that or specify that you're terminating and that will essentially terminate at the text and then anything after that is being uh, is not uh, is not sanitized uh, over here so all of this input can all be passed through so hopefully in the next level there is a bit of sanitization because that'll be quite interesting so well, now that we have the password for natus 10 let's actually move on to that next level and uh, sorry we'll just move this to natus 10 here and i'll hit enter we say natus 10 and uh, let's just hit ok and there we are all right so there we are so th th that's exactly what i predicted so it tells us uh, for security reasons we now filter uh, we now filter on certain characters so again we can do the same thing we say ls it gives us what, the matching results from the dictionary if i view the source code you can see that um, uh, we have something new here uh, we have the an if statement with if the key is not equal to uh, the, the value of the key and it tells us if the preg match uh, so there these are the special characters that they're filtering for so we can pretty much bypass this if we try and use a cheat sheet or some commands that we will actually uh, re replace some of the forward slashes and uh, so so let's actually search for that so I'm going to say uh, uh, OS command injection cheat cheat and uh, let's find one here uh, we can actually use that one uh, let's see which one we have here one so this tells us the cheat sheets series has been moved to github so we can actually open that up um, and I think this is the one anyway so uh, this gives us the basic defenses uh, so let's go back a step here and uh, let's let's try this one here uh, I'm not really sure which one to use um, but we're looking for special characters that we can use so we have one here so we pretty much cannot use any forward slash uh the upper uh, the the and sign uh any uh, semicolon um yeah so that looks like it um so with that in mind uh we can't use these ones nor can we use any of these ones here um let's see if we have any other ones that we can use here um, so let's try this one this one looks like we actually can display uh, some values here so let's try that let's that that really does not have any of the characters that it is sanitizing for um, so we're just going to hit search uh, one more time and we're going to say needle equals and we paste that in there and cat etsy uh, natus web uh, natus 11 i believe and we hit enter and it tells us the input contains an illegal character yeah uh, no semicolon and yeah we get the password immediately so i uh, did not need to terminate that because that is also part of the i believe the percentage sign yeah so so, so that was actually part of the, uh, the 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 legal characters that we could not use um so now that we got the password for natus 11 let's check it out let's see what that is uh, dealing with so natus 11 and we'll open that up hit okay and we're now dealing with cookies all right, so I'm going to end this video here. And the reason being is now we're dealing with cookies. Uh, command injection and local file inclusion are fairly simple to understand. Uh, I'll be posting the OASP uh, pages. Uh, you can actually go through the vulnerability, how to remediate it, uh, the various uh, ways you can actually uh, exploit it. So the various pr proof of concepts. So I'll be ending the video here. In the next uh, set of videos, we'll be taking a look at uh, the future levels and, of course, uh, more specifically cookies. So that's going to be it for this video and I'll be seeing you in the next video. Peace.